One of the most admirable traits about MMA fighters is what ridiculous shape they're in as athletes. While everyone's built different, there are a ton of top-level talent that are shredded like tax returns older than three years. I mean, just ridiculous physiques. But what a lot of fans don't realize is that the fight night body you see isn't the same as the athlete walking around day to day. It's really hard to get that cut up. It's a long and arduous process that culminates on fight week, and with the exception of the super freakiest like Michael Chandler who doesn't even know what bread is, fighters' bodies naturally go in cycles from Rocky 4 to Rocky 1 and back again. So today, to help you with that complex you get looking in the mirror after every UFC card, we're going to take a look at 10 fighters who dirty bulk in the offseason and then hop into the cage looking like Rick Rude. I'm Tommy from MMA On Point, and these are 10 fighters that get super out of shape between fights. Number 10, Patty Pimblett. Ah, we start with the inspiration for our list, the biggest new star in the UFC, no pun intended, Patty Pimblett. The UK's latest and greatest export made a big splash in his promotional debut, earning a performance of the night winning finish on the feet at UFC Vegas 36. Looking like a cut up Owen Hart in the cage, fans were a bit taken back when the baddie posted some shots on social media a month later. The lightweight prospect, well, he doesn't mind putting on a few LBs when he's not in camp. In fact, he said he normally weighs about 195 pounds. The images set MMA Twitter on fire and the memes began pouring in, with Patty more than happy to embrace them. Pimblet loves eating like a garbage disposal when he's not in camp, and has said he can put down at least four desserts without feeling full. That's probably because desserts aren't designed to fill you up. That's what the meal was for. It's just supposed to be a little treat after dinner, but who the hell am I to tell him how many desserts to eat? The man has no problem getting back into the gym 10 weeks before a show and coming out on fight night looking sharp. He was also the Cage Warriors featherweight champion, so he can get even leaner if there's a good fight in it. More so than most on this list, Patty has fully embraced his post-fight body, and in turn, so have his fans. Number 9. Paulo Costa Talk about a relevant entry, former middleweight title contender Paulo Costa simply does not give a single fuck about possibly anything, but definitely how much he weighs. Cruising into fight week for his headlining bout with Marvin Vittori at UFC Vegas 41 on October 23rd, weighing 211 pounds, the Brazilian forced the bout to be contested at a catchweight of 195. But that debacle isn't why Paulo made the list today. The dude, generally speaking, looks like a Marvel superhero. The guy is just jacked up beyond belief. It's hard to imagine any period of time when he's not looking like the next biggest threat to the Avengers. But that's if you've never checked out the Erasers YouTube channel. Coming in at a respectable 116k subs as of this writing, Paulo's channel is mainly camp vlogs and reaction videos, because of course it's YouTube. In his first ever upload though, or at least the earliest video that has survived on his channel from May of 2020, ironically partially titled I Am Too Heavy, yes you are Costa, the tough Brazil alum showed off what he called his chunky body, even stepping on the scale to show that he was weighing 235 pounds. Now don't get me wrong, if I look like Paulo Costa at 235, I would never wear a shirt again, but as you can tell it's certainly a far cry from what we're used to seeing. Costa cited an injury, a lack of training, and food as the reason for the bulk. Yeah, that'll do it. Number 8. Darren Till He's perhaps one of the more open and honest fighters that's ever stepped into the octagon. Maybe, if anything, Liverpool's Darren Till is a bit of an oversharer. Not every single thought that comes to mind needs to be said in an interview or on social media, but it's also led to some really interesting insight into the mind and life of a high-level fighter in the UFC. One such revelation was how tough the reality of lockdown during the pandemic had been on the gorilla. Four months prior to his return to the octagon at Fight Island, Till posted a mirror selfie with the aftermath of not having a chance to train properly while cooped up at home, a shot plenty of fighters would have never considered posting. The caption hilariously listed all kinds of delicious treats that Darren was enjoying. Five Guys burgers, chocolate eclairs, Doritos with dip. He also joked that the workout from home videos, quote, aren't worth a wank, and so he got bored with them. The memes came flooding in, as you can imagine, and considering Till is one of the biggest social media trolls in the sport, that's not surprising. But nobody was laughing come weigh-ins four months later when Darren looked lean, mean, and ready to throw down with Bobby Knuckles in his fifth UFC main event in just ten fights. It's a pretty amazing transformation in that amount of time, just a testament to how hard these fighters normally work when the world isn't ending. Number 7. BJ Penn There really has never been an out-of-shape BJ Penn during his career. I think every version of the Prodigy from 2001 to 2012 could throw down even if he hadn't been off the couch in a month. No, there is only motivated BJ Penn and default BJ Penn. Depending on which one you run into, his physique may vary. Now, we're talking about a guy who has truly run the gamut when it comes to weight classes. At his largest, he was fighting Lyoto Machida in an open weight bout in K1 Heroes, hitting the scale at 191 pounds. At his smallest, Penn competed in the UFC's featherweight division. That's 
that's 145 pounds in case you forgot. So we're talking about a nearly 50 pound swing, that's pretty extreme. While most of his career was fought at light and welterweight, BJ has definitely been known to have varying levels of physique based on which weight class he's in, whether he's in camp, and if he's taking things seriously. He called himself a fat 185 pounds during his K1 period, and after getting dissed by Rory McDonald in 2012 before their fight, where the Red King said he was out of shape the last time he saw the prodigy, the former two weight champion took the comment to heart and worked hard to get his body fat percentage down in preparation for the fight. Getting fans excited that motivated BJ Penn was making a return after he'd contemplated retirement following the brutal bout he had with Nick Diaz at UFC 137. If only we knew the pain to come. Number 6. TJ Dillashaw he has one of the most ridiculous physiques on our entire list. You might even say he's unnaturally shredded. That was a joke and a bad one. He was only caught with EPO people. I could have a complete transfusion of Lance Armstrong's Tour de France super blood, and I still wouldn't be able to get that cut up. All PED jokes aside though, when TJ Dillashaw is not in the cage, the former bantamweight champion has an alter ego that comes out, one that devours everything in sight, like he's a 135 pound Kirby. He even has a name for him. He's called Fat Tyler. He has embraced this persona so much, in fact, that if you go on his website, there are t-shirts to purchase with a cartoon image of FT. Understandably, Fat Tyler doesn't seem to make a ton of public appearances, but Dillashaw has joked over the years about his alter ego's insatiable appetite. We've had a few rare glimpses of Fat Tyler on social media. One image in particular from his Instagram in 2019 set the MMA community on fire. There's a whole bunch of people in that picture, but most of the comments are about Dillashaw's physique. TJ's known to have one of the largest and most mind-blowing weight cuts in the whole sport, although by that point he's not Fat Tyler anymore, but coming into fight week looking like he couldn't possibly cut any more weight, or he'd literally just be a skeleton. I really want one of those t-shirts. Number 5. Gian Vellante COVID's been hard on everybody, okay? I don't care what walk of life or how disciplined you are, with everything going on, it's not exactly been easy to find a place to train, let alone maintain any kind of routine. It's been a real challenge, and fighters are no different than you and I. Besides the fact that they're borderline superhuman and could quite literally beat the shit out of every single one of us. But one fighter during the pandemic decided to turn chicken shit into chicken salad, as Brock Lesnar would say, and that man is Gian Vellante. COVID had seriously hampered his ability to train, and as a result, he gained a little bit of weight. But of course, come fight night, he's gotta hit the scales at 205 pounds, or he's taking a pay cut. Which is why Volante is genius, because he decided instead to move up to heavyweight, something the slugger was already interested in doing anyway. Now he doesn't have to worry about how the hell he's gonna properly train his body down to 205 pounds, and still focus on a full fight camp, all while in 2020 the world is collapsing around him. Mind you, Gian makes his home in New York, one of the hardest hit states by COVID. Honestly, the move was a no-brainer. And so come UFC on ESPN 12, the Sarah Longo fighter made his move to heavyweight, for the first time since entering the octagon. He retired following UFC 268 two fights later, but heavyweight Volante's legend will live on. Number 4. John Jones as the former light heavyweight champion in exile attempts to apparently bulk up to 275 pounds before making his heavyweight debut, you know, something totally normal that everybody can do at 34 years old, add 40 pounds or more to your frame that's functional and maintainable, what better time than now to talk about the many physiques of John Jones? I shouldn't say many, but there's definitely been a few. On fight night, Jones is generally pretty lean. He's never been one to be exactly jacked up, but he normally looks like a very in-shape skinny guy. Back in 2012, prior to his Hall of Fame winning bout against Alexander Gustafson though, the champ revealed that he wasn't exactly in fight shape heading into his camp. Now, this was of course a notorious period of time, as Jones has relayed in interviews that he was partying his ass off leading up to that fight with Gus and didn't take the mauler seriously enough. On fight night itself, JBJ looked like he always does in terms of his physique, so he must have put in some work at least. The more staggering transformation that Johnny Bones had was that time he got really into powerlifting in 2015. It was then he posted a 2013 before shot, so a year after Gus, and then 2015, where he was looking like he might be randomly selected for a drug test. This was from seven months of training four days a week. I'm sure there was lots of chicken, rice, and broccoli in between sets. Number three, Johnny Hendricks. Two days after fighting Neil Magny at UFC 207 in a catchweight bout at 173.5 pounds, Johnny Hendricks tipped the scales at 220. He said his ankles were the size of his calves, his kidneys were failing, yeah, you might say he was in a really bad spot, the product of putting his body through extreme weight cuts throughout his college wrestling career and a decade in MMA. He would never compete at welterweight again following the incident, and while that story isn't exactly the post-fight bulking we're talking about on today's list, it's an important footnote because apparently one of the aspects that made Johnny's cuts over the years so difficult was his lifestyle in between fights. In the prime of his career when he stepped into the cage, Hendricks looked like a bulldozer, or a big rig you might say. See what I did there? But come off season, you can find a few pictures of the former welterweight champion looking a bit more Tonka truck than his fight night counterpart. According to his former nutritionist Lou Giordana, it was Johnny's lifestyle that made the weight cuts in his career so much harder, saying Hendricks would gain a good amount of weight in between bouts, and so breaking down his heavier build come camp and fight week was all the more challenging as a result, on top of all the wear from decades of extreme weight cutting. It all came 
came to a head at the end of his career, but the man was a welterweight champion and arguably beat GSP that night at UFC 167, so if the guy wants to have a cheese pizza from time to time, who the hell cares? Number 2. Henry Cejudo how fast could you get into the best shape of your life? If you'd have told me three months, I would have said that's a bit of a stretch, especially during the Pandooski we've all been fighting through. But then again, none of us are Henry Cejudo. Four days after the US declared COVID a public emergency, the once triple C future quad C was just starting camp for his UFC 249 bantamweight title defense. A bout that would see all kinds of changes given how the circumstances of the pandemic would shape the entire fight world day to day almost. We lost Tony versus Habib. The card moved to Jacksonville, Florida. Henry was supposed to fight Jose Aldo, then he became Dominic Cruz. Cruise. Apparently nothing could deter Cejudo from getting after it for 84 days though, because right before fight week, the King of Cringe posted this insane body transformation before and after. That is some hyperbolic time chamber shit. How does one go from the left to the right in 12 weeks? This isn't one of those shitty infomercial before and afters where the guy just sticks his stomach out a bit, but he's still completely jacked. Cejudo looks like two different people here. He went from 26.4 pounds of fat mass to 18.1 by the end of camp and put on four pounds of lean muscle all in just three months. No big deal. Henry would retire after the win, but we all know he's coming back. Come on now. Number one, Mark Munoz. This has been a very tongue-in-cheek list. Anything inspired by Patty Pimblett isn't exactly going to be serious, but our next entry is no joke, and honestly a testament to the power that combat sports has to help those who are struggling to potentially get to a better place, both physically and mentally. Mark Munoz suffered one of the most horrific beatdowns in UFC history when he fought Chris Weidman in 2012. It was a devastating loss, one that dashed Mark's title hopes. Prior to the fight, he was 7-1 in his last eight, with wins over Damian Maya and Chris Lieben. Weidman would receive a title fight off the victory, and of course go on to be the one to dethrone Anderson Silva. Not only did Munoz lose that opportunity, but he broke his foot during the fight and would be sidelined because of it. In a bad spot in his career, unable to train, and in a deep depression, the middleweight began using food as comfort and started 2013 over 250 pounds. Then perhaps the best thing that could have happened did. His foot healed, and the UFC booked him for a bout with Tim Bosch at UFC 162, just a few days shy of a year after he last stepped into the octagon. A week before the fight, Mark was under 200 pounds and on point to make weight at 185. He'd lost 50 pounds since January. Munoz would go on to win the bout via unanimous decision. It's an incredible story. While mental health is complex and healing is not always something that can be done alone or by simply pulling ourselves up by our bootstraps, it's inspiring to see someone go through such a difficult period and come out on the other side. Huge shout out to Lawton Vierkan for masterfully piecing this video together. The casual can be found on Twitter and IG at Lawton underscore Vierkant, where he's probably laying down some sweet tunes. A big Big, big thank you to Ben Rosette, who provided that sweet tune you heard in the intro. Check out his music by clicking the link in the description and go give him a follow on his Instagram and Twitter page at Ben Rosette. All right, that's all I got for you. Thanks for watching. Please like, subscribe, and have a wonderful day.